Hey everybody, Pastor Jeff Milne here, Nick Todd Baptist Church. Glad you could join us. We're going to have a devotional today on 1 John. So if you don't have your Bible with you, I'll invite you to just take a moment, hit pause, go get your Bible, and then return. I'll open us with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that we can come together today, God. God, we praise you for how you love us and how you uh, work out uh, our salvation, God. God, you, you are amazing. Lord, we thank you that even in difficult times, times of struggle, times of isolation, times of separation, God, we can see you at work. We can feel your presence in our lives. God, we know that, that this time of COVID-19, God, is a struggle for many people. So Lord, we, we think of those who are struggling with the isolation and with being separated from others. And God, we pray that you, you strengthen them. God, we pray for the healthcare workers. We pray for other essential workers, God, that you put a hedge of protection around them and you give them strength, God, and courage. We praise you for them, Lord, and we thank you for them. Keep them safe, God. And God, for the people in our community, we just pray, Lord, that you continue to look after them, Lord. That you help us to draw together as a community. And most of all, that you help us to take opportunity of the time that you have given us now through this. That we take this extra time we are given and we use it, Lord, in a productive way to spend some time focusing attention on our relationship with you, God. So may this be a spark that draws us closer to you. May we see ways, God, that you're working in the midst of this, and may we praise you, and may we point these things out to those around us, God, for your glory, for your fame. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. So this passage we're going to look at is uh, 1 John, verses 7 through 12. It reads, Dear friends, let us love one another. Love comes from God. Everyone who knows love has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. So may God bless us, the reading of his word today. Now this, this devotion that I'm going to look at today is one that um, I actually encountered first um, through the writings of Mark Harris in a, in a book that I use for personal devotions, Companions for Your Spiritual Journey. And Mark um, points out that Bernard of Clairvaux, who was a, a monk in the 1100s in France, Bernard had a, a theory that there were four levels of love that uh, people could go through. Now, Bernard was considered among the holiest of people, and he's still highly regarded for his thinkings and, and writings on God and, and the holy life that he lived. Now, he believed that we, we need to love God because no one deserves our love more justly than God, because God gave himself for our sake in a time when we were clearly undeserving of that. So we need to love God because he first loved us. Now, I'd said that he concluded that there were four different um, levels or degrees of love that we could attain. Now, the first one really was loving ourselves for our own sake. Now, this is a basic self-interest, self-love. 
it's our human nature that we do this. We can see it easily in the world, but we sometimes have a hard time seeing it in ourselves. We don't really like seeing it because it, it identifies a, a weakness in us, that we are, we are self-centered and self-focused. But we know it's there. Now, if we find ourselves in this level of love, the, the level of self-love, that we need to spend time thinking about things that have happened in our lives without our doing. Looking for evidence of God in our lives. Looking for evidence of God in other people's lives, even, if we, if we struggle with seeing it in our own. So maybe you are at this place, and maybe you have a friend or someone you know who has been changed by their relationship with God. And maybe you see this and you find it both impressive and strange at the same time because you knew this person before, but now they're, they're different. They have a different outlook. They have a different way of going through life. You can look to that as an evidence of God. And you can move beyond your own self-interest if you lean into that a little bit. Think about it as seeing God revealed in others. You can have an honest conversation with God about this. You can actually enter into prayer with God about your uh, wrestling with unbelief. There's a story in the Gospel of John, a different book than the one we read from, but in John's Gospel in chapter 9, there's a man whose son is unwell, and the disciples try to heal him, and they're not, they're not able. So the man comes to Jesus, and he says, Jesus, heal my son if you're able. And Jesus says, what do you mean, if I'm able? Anything can be done if you believe. If a person believes, anything can be done. So that man, he, he then he cries out, and he says, I believe, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. He needed to believe more. He wanted to believe more. And he knew it. And he had that honest conversation with Jesus, and Jesus healed his son. We can move past our self-interest level, loving ourselves for our own sake, and move to the next level if we start to see God in other places and enter into conversation with God about it, ask God to help you move past your unbelief. The second level that you can go to after that is loving God for your own sake. Now, this is the early stages of Christian belief. This is entry level stuff, really. Even at this level, we are entering into a relationship with God for all the things that God can do for us. And we're petitioning Him for ourselves, really. Even our confessions are rooted in our own self-interest in the sense that we're giving them over to God because we want to be freed of the burden that they've brought us. We're not giving them over because we want to be reconciled to Him or or deepen our relationship with Him. We haven't yet entered that kind of understanding. If we're at level two, and when we're at level two, we'll find ourselves going to God constantly for what He can do for us. So we're loving Him for our own sake. Now we can move past this when we begin to see what God has done for us without us as much as asking. When we begin to have things revealed to us about God's love for us, that he sent his son Jesus to the cross when we were undeserving, which is always. We have that kind of God. So when we come to these revelations, it's very humbling. It makes us realize that we have something that we don't deserve, but it also brings us comfort as well. And that's where we begin to move into the next level when we're, when we're both humbled and comforted by the love of God. And this is when 
we can move to loving God because God is good. This is what Bernard would call level three love. And this is the place where we come as, as more mature Christians. When we realize that the kingdom of God has very little to do with us and it has everything to do with God. It is the place where we come and realize that we love him not because he is good to us, but because he is good, period. We love him not because he's good to us, but because he is good. This is where we really begin to get comforted from God. Even in times of strife and struggle, when we are at this level, we have a gift of comfort that is, is hard to comprehend and it's hard to even explain. It is just something that we are granted. It is the peace that Christ promised his disciples. Here, our pains and calamities are even looked at as opportunities to grow nearer to God because we realize that He is the Almighty One. And these pains and calamities are just opportunities for us to deepen our relationship with Him. We turn to Him in praise and for strength, not because we expect Him to give us strength, but because we know that he already has. Our relationship with him is the strength that he gives. When we're at level three, we are at a place where we're ready to share our love of God because of his goodness. And we, we see the need to take that to others. We pray for our neighbors and we pray for our enemies and we pray for the world. We pray that people will move to their next level of relationship with God. We enter into a place in our own relationship where we really take the words that Jesus taught us to pray, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We take those words to heart. And we, we wrestle with those words because we realize that it is completely about seeing God's will done. And this is where we come to when we move into the fourth level, loving ourselves for God's sake. This is the rarest and highest of the love levels. This is the master's level of love of God. It's where we completely become submissive to God. It is loving him with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength, as Jesus said in the Great Commandments. It is rare because we have things in ourselves that we don't completely turn over to God. These are things that we hold on to because they bring us shame. They're things that we don't even like to admit to ourselves. And these are the things that hold us back from getting our master's degree in love. But we get glimpses of it. Each time that we advance by submitting something that we've been holding on to over to God, he makes us a little bit more like Christ. He makes us a little bit of something new. And we get to have a glimpse of this level of loving ourselves and not for anything that we've done, but because we are his and because of what he has done. This is that submitting to loving him with all our hearts, souls, mind, and strength. Level four is, is what we should be striving for in life. It is something that when we get glimpses of it, um, they carry us a long way and for long periods of time because we know that our relationship with God can always be strengthened and stronger. It is the regeneration that happens in Christians. 
So today, I want to encourage you to, to read that passage. And actually, if you read all of um, 1 John um, chapter 4, verses 7 through 21 even, you can see uh, what John was talking about there is really submitting to God with our lives, giving over everything to Him. And this is a great time for us to think about that because one of the things that we've been given with this, this pandemic in our lives is many of us have been given time because now there isn't the opportunity to do things that we would normally do that occupy our time. So I want to encourage you today to take some time and think about where you are in your stage of love of God. Are you still caught up in that loving yourself for yourself's sake? Or are you moving into different levels of relationship with God? Have some prayers today. Turn over to God some of the things that, that you know are creating divide between you and He. Really take some time and think about um, where God is calling you to move in your next step in relationship with Him. So may you be strengthened by His Word today. And may you be moved to grow just a little bit in your relationship with Him. Because it is through our relationship with Him that we will be able to do the second part of His great commandment and move into loving our neighbors as ourselves. So, may you go in peace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. I'll see you soon.